Hi, I'm Ray, back again from the radio workshop. There's the Coast Guard. Um, hang on, there's the phone. Can you believe it? Sorry about that. Rude interruption. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, um, in the workshop, I'm just about to restore this one. Look at that lovely ivory. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. Um, I've got it going at least. What I'm here for is pirates. Now, not the type out at sea with a patch, not Captain Pugwash, but uh, medium wave radio pirates back in the 1960s and early 70s. Um, I, well, I'd, I've just watched a couple of my other videos. What I don't want people to think is that I spent my entire youth uh, and early 20s every Sunday pirating. That wasn't the case. When I think back in, in a year, okay, in a sort of 52 weeks of the year, I was probably only, well, I say I, uh, the lads, not me, I was watching, the lads were probably only pirating, what, eight Sundays, perhaps ten Sundays out of the whole year. And that was only for a couple of hours. So, you know, I just don't want people to think I just sort of spent my teens and early 20s uh, always pirating. Uh, I spent all the other Sundays building the transmitters uh, ready for the Sundays when we did pirate. No, so there we are. Now, the thing is, trying to recall things uh, that happened, what, let me see, I, I, what, getting on for 50 years ago, I try to think, you know, what, what could I, what stories can I tell? Because I've had a lot of emails from people, you know, more stories, more stories. It's great, I can't remember, it's a long time ago. But one, I woke up in the night uh, and I thought, I've got it, I've got the next story, I know what it is. Um, it includes a girl, well, a young woman, sort of 20, 21 years old, with a pram in the park. Now, intriguing, what's all that about? As I've said before, you don't want to get caught, there's no point in that. You've got to choose your transmitting site carefully. Uh, no good being, uh, as that chap was out in his boat, a couple of hundred yards, remember that video? You stand on the beach, there he is, pirate flag, it is me, I'm here, I'm pirating. Now, that's crazy, that's brilliant fun though, but crazy. I suppose it was all crazy really. So you've got to hide the transmitter somewhere. Now, it's not only hiding the transmitter, that is relatively easy. You can dig a hole, put it in the ground, cover you know, a bit of wood over it with leaves all over it, aerial up in the tree. That is the problem, the aerial up in the tree. On medium wave, you've got to have a pretty decent aerial. It's no good having sort of 10 feet of wire just hanging out of the window. You, yes, it'll work, you, you know, with a decent ATU. You'll load up the aerial okay, but it's not going to go very far. Um, you know, even with some decent power into that piece of wire, you're not going to go, you're not going to cover the whole town. And of course, if you're going out kind of uh, mobile or, or to a site in the woods, you can't have a high power, you can't have like a couple of hundred watts because you'd need a generator and it just all gets, it's just not practical. If people would hear the generator for miles away, you know, what's that generator going in the woods on a Sunday morning? Yeah, right. <laughs> so you need a decent aerial. We used to run low power, perhaps 10, 20 watts, something like that. Uh, with a decent aerial, you could get miles, covered a whole town. And not only that, we did get a report one Sunday from France. Um, one of our, one of the lads' relatives was over there, uh, you know, on the north coast of France, it wasn't that far across the channel, but uh, found us on his transistor radio. There we are, uh, sort of 15 watts, something like that, with a decent aerial. So we were all in the pub one night. I do remember this well, even though I'm getting old and it's nearly 50 years ago. All in the pub one night, and we're sort of mulling over the problems. Um, you don't want your transmitter confiscated, obviously, uh, you know, along with the power supply, your cassette tape recorder, your car battery, all the gear. Um, you want the aerial hidden. So after a, a, a sort of a few hours chatting and a few beers, someone came up with this idea. We go to the local park, okay. There were sort of bushes and some trees. It wasn't like woodland, but the, you know, there was some trees. Put the aerial up in these trees, a really good aerial, really a, a long length of wire, good vertical section as well. Bring the vertical down, uh, it was sort of greenish colour, thin wire. Bring it down uh, through this bush by the park, one of these park benches. 
Okay, now the transmitter. Ah, this was the clever bit. I love this. I think this was the best idea that any of us have ever had. Okay, as I said before, girl, young woman, 20, 21 years old, pram, no baby in the pram. What's in the pram? You, you've guessed. What's in the pram? There she is sitting on the park bench. Okay, here's the pram. Just sort of, this is the end of the bench. Here's the pram here. All right, with the blankets, the hoods up. Yeah, it's like one of these old-fashioned prams. Got the hood up, and as I say, there's no baby in there. In the in the pram is our transmitter, our car battery, cassette tape recorder. Okay, with some tapes that need to be changed. You know, one, two, three, marked in order. Um, the power supply it was a valve transmitter, so the car battery worked the valve heaters. Uh, the HT for the transmitter was uh, from a transistorized inverter that we built. Excellent. The aerial, the pram's right here, end of the park bench. Aerial just comes out of the bushes and clips onto a little insulator, tiny little little bit sticking out of the side of the pram. You just with a crocodile clip onto there. We preloaded the aerial. We'd taken it all there beforehand, uh, loaded up the aerial. You know, left all the settings as they were, and. That was it, we were ready to go. I've got a cup of tea now. Any aerial, especially if you, you know, on uh, something like medium wave, you're gonna need a decent earth system, which we didn't have. You know, you need radials, earth stakes, all this sort of thing, uh, to, you know, to make the whole system effective. We didn't have an earth at all, but it did work surprisingly well, uh, you know, with, with no earth at all. We couldn't start you know, banging in earth stakes and running running wires you know all, all across through the the wooded area where these trees were so anyway um it was all set up we, we got the atu in the pram and everything we'd all loaded all this up beforehand so on the sunday morning the girl walks into the park okay now she's doing all this herself now she's on her own uh walks into you know, we're in the bushes over there like 50 yards away a few of us there sits at the sits down little crocodile clip out the bushes onto the little bit of metal sticking out the side of the pram on the insulator. Okay, she adjusts the blanket like she's seeing to the baby. Power on, right, inverter starts up. Um, you know, everything starts going. And we told her, you know, just wait a couple of minutes. Press play on the tape recorder. She knew which tape to put on and all this business. Um, and we're on the air. Well, she was, <laughs> we weren't, we were in the bushes. She is, uh, sitting in the park uh, committing uh, you know, a criminal offence. Excellent. What could be better? One of the lads, when we were in the pub, has, has suggested we go a bit further, have a second tape recorder in the pram under the blanket uh, with a crying baby. You know, not screaming, but just sort of crying and whimpering. And uh, <laughs> we didn't do that, of course, but yeah, he said, oh, no, it'll, it'll, it'll add to the realism and all this nonsense. Um, the, the thing was, as, as I think I pointed out, you've got to be careful with these blankets over the transmitter. The valve's got extremely hot. Imagine the, the blanket and the pram catching fire. Okay, so you've got this sort of crying baby, the girl rushing through the park with the pram that's on fire, there's smoke and flames, and this baby in it crying. So, oh dear. Anyway, it didn't catch fire, and we didn't use the idea of the, uh, you know, the second cassette tape with the, the baby on it so it was working it was on the air and it was working uh, would have worked far better with an earth as I've said but uh, it covered the town it was good the part was reasonably high up as well it wasn't sort of in a dip um, so the Sunday was successful but what was disappointing the GPO didn't turn up obviously we didn't really want them to turn up but it it would have been interesting to see you know what they what they're going to do they come to the park and look around like what's going on where's the transmitter but anyway they didn't turn up um so that it, it was all successful we got reports from our various sort of listening stations in and around the town and it had gone very well um harry who i shall call i mentioned him in the one of the other videos harry and his granny harry in his wisdom during the week he went and put these uh Right, he was digging slots, uh, not across the grass, and putting wire radials in, um, in the under the bushes and where the trees were. 
covering all with leaves, did it very well, and he had a, a little, a little, a little bit of top of a copper pipe sticking out of the ground like that, just by the park bench, because uh, he was saying, "Oh, we, we need an earth." You know, we all knew that we needed an earth system, but I suppose none of us could be bothered really. Anyway, he went and did that, and on the following Sunday, we we got there early uh, without the girl. We just took the pram and a uh, you know, very early Sunday morning and we're setting it all up. We collected the earth, used the, the, the metal body of the pram as the kind of the chassis of the transmitter, clipped the earth on and it loaded up and we got far better, far more aerial current. You know, it was really good. We had a little one of the thermocouple ammeters in there, army surplus in the pram. The pram, actually also what we had done is improve the suspension on the pram. I uh, nearly forgot that bit because what with the car battery and all the stuff in there, I mean car batteries are heavy and we used a pretty big one, a uh, heavy duty one, so it would last, uh, you know, the, the duration sort of thing. You don't want, it, don't want the car battery dying after sort of half an hour. So we had to improve the suspension on the pram. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, so off we went on the next Sunday, the other girl came in with the pram. Um, what this time, one clip onto the little copper pipe the other one for the aerial from the bushes. Um, she was, yeah, she was. I mean, she was up for it. She was, she loved it all. Brilliant stuff. Um, and we went on the air, and it was great. Far better signal with the earth. Far better signal around the town. Because the trouble is with a short, you know, if the aerial was short as it was, would be on medium wave. I would say you're talking about, I don't know, middle of medium wave. What you said, 250 meters, um, somewhere there, medium wave. Halfway is going to be half of that, well, 175 metres, really 175 metre long piece of wire. Or half of that if it's a quarter wave. And if it's a quarter wave, as a lot of you will know, um, it's, it's current fed. You really need, you've got to have an earth. So anyway, we got over the earth problem, or Harry did. Anyway, I don't think he took his granny into the woods and got her cutting slots in the ground with a slave. I don't think his granny was up to that. I just said 175 metres, no, half of 250 metres, get 250 metres on the dial, where's that, yeah, where Radio 1 used to be, so 250 metres, half of that is 125 metres, that's half wave aerial, and then half that again, so it's, uh, what, 50, 60, two and a half metres for a quarter wave, or even that, so you know, 60 odd metres of wire, that is a lot, and that's only a quarter wave. Uh, you're going to need a good earth. Anyway, that aside, it all went very well. I'm going to shut that window over there, it's starting to rain. Um, I, I remember looking around, there's a girl, okay, sitting on the park bench, she's got the pram next to her, she's reading a book, um, she, she was keeping an eye on the boot, well we were 50 yards away that way from her in the bushes, um, so you know the sign was if we do that just reach under the blanket, flick the switch off, you know, undo the crock clips and just wander off through the park, you know, that was fine. Um, but she looked perfectly innocent, just reading a book, there's her pram, uh, you know, people think that the baby is asleep in the pram, there are other people in the park, people walking a dog, I remember there were some kids playing with a, a ball, kicking a, a football around, you know, Nice summer's day, Sunday morning, coming up to Sunday lunchtime in the park. Look around, it's all perfectly innocent. And yet it was a, you know, a pirate radio transmitting site. Brilliant. It was the third or fourth Sunday, can't remember. As I say, I'm going back nearly 50 years, but that's when the GPO turned up. Uh, we'd been doing this at the weekends, um, and we were actually coming to the end of it anyway, because it had been fun. Um, my fun was building transmitters. I like sitting in my workshop at the bench building transmitters. That's where I got my fun from. Uh, the, the actual pirating, uh, well, the DJ chap, you know, he loved it. He loved making up the tapes ready to, for the, you know, the transmission. Uh, he was good as well. He was a good DJ. Um, I, th I think he was a, a builder by trade but he was good at DJing anyway uh, so yeah you know I also enjoyed aerials uh, I still do I like experimenting with aerials um, so we were coming to the end anyway but the GPO turned up uh, we saw them 
a couple of, you know, we saw actually, we saw their, their van, because you can't miss their van. And you know, we were looking out, obviously, for whoever's coming into the park. There, were, there was one entrance in, to the, or two entrances, sort of in and out, or whatever. Anyway, they, they wandered in, <clears throat> and we, you know, we recognised them. Um, we didn't sort of give the girl the signal, because you know, we wanted to see what they were doing. They looked around, obviously looking for an aerial. They knew they'd reached the, the site. Uh, you know, they knew that the signal was that strong that they were, they'd reached where the transmitter was. They just, just a question of finding the aerial and the transmitter. Um, they looked up at the, the trees, didn't see anything, because as I said, the, the aerial wire was very thin, very thin green wire, dark green, same color as the leaves of the, of the trees. So they went back to the van and uh, you know, we wonder what they were doing. Anyway, they returned a few minutes later with a little transistor radio. And they're doing all this, trying to sort of direction find. They realized that they were on top of the transmitter because the directional properties of the ferrite rod aerial, when you're that close to the transmitter, it just falls apart. You know, it doesn't matter where you turn it, it's, it just blasts, it just overloads the front end. Um, so they're looking around again, obviously for a, a bunch of teenage hippies which we were, you know, that we had the hair and the beard, and as you did in the 60s, oh dear, dreadful. Good job I haven't got any photographs. I think I've got photographs somewhere of me like that. Um, and there's, they, they look around, there's the girl sitting by the pram reading a book, people walking dogs, kids playing in the park, summer's day, you know, what's wrong with that? All perfectly innocent. Um, and they obviously didn't know what to do. They just, they're walking around. They turn the transistor radio off at this point, because no point in having that on. They're looking up continually for the aerial. They're looking in bushes. Uh, now we were in the bushes. So yeah, we had to sort of keep very quiet. In fact, where we were in the bushes, you could sort of get out of the back way of the bushes. Uh, so had they approached us, we would have just sloped off. We eventually did the thumbs down to the girl because they were, beginning to kind of get get into the bushes and go around the back of the bushes. They were beginning a thorough search of the park because they knew it was there. So we did the thumbs down. Well, she's reading her book. <laughs> I think she got engrossed in the book. Eventually she saw it, a thumbs down. And uh, she reached under the blanket, flicked the switch. That cut the battery, the car battery. So everything went off. Um, disconnected the little crock clip for the aerial push that into the bushes uh, you know she did it all exactly as as she was supposed to just pulled the earth wire off the little copper pipe sticking out the ground stuffed that under the blanket um, and then wandered off up the footpath uh, actually walked past these two chaps um, and and she wandered out of the park I mean had they suspected her the, you can't really go up to a kind of a girl uh, you know 20 year old young woman in the park, you know, start asking her questions. You know, it's not the done thing. Um, so, you know, they might, might have got arrested themselves. Anyway, um, they what she did, the plan was she walked a, a couple of streets away and uh, one of the, it was the girlfriend of one of the lads and he was waiting, uh, he was parked around the corner somewhere in his van with his mate and they lifted the pram into the back of the van, shut the doors and that was that. Uh, and the plan was that uh, everyone goes up to the pub, the local pub, which wasn't far, um, after after the year it all finished. Of course, the GPO lads didn't know the transmitter had gone off, let alone know that all the gear had left the park under their noses. Uh, they eventually, we watched them, they eventually turned the transistor radio on again. No signal, of course. And that, I think that really annoyed them because they're looking around. They knew that um, they'd been seen. They knew that the pirates had kind of visual contact with them. Well, I say that, perhaps they didn't. I mean, that was usually the case. That They get close to the transmitter site, the transmitter goes off, they know they've been seen. Um, perhaps that wasn't the case this time, I don't know, because they'd been in the park for quite some time looking around, and the transmitter stayed on. Um, they wouldn't have known when it had gone off because they'd turned their radio off. Anyway, they, they, you know, they went back to the van. They searched everywhere. They're never going to find quarter of inch copper pipe sticking out of the ground by the bushes. Um, 
the aerial they just didn't spot it because it went the vertical section was kind of in the bushes which were quite high you know these rhododendron bushes that's what they were they're quite high then this little wire you know you, you'd even if you knew where it was you'd have a job to see it so that was that um yeah that was uh that, i think it was three or four sundays in a row uh, and that was that we didn't have any more use for the pram and the gear really because where else can you go with a pram you need the aerial and preferably an earth uh no good going down to the beach with the pram sitting on the promenade because you've got no aerial um no good being in the town somewhere you know, you've got to have the aerial this was always the problem um but uh, there were there was something else we did actually with the pram we transmitted for two hours using the pram uh, I'm not going to tell you about that now. I think the video is getting about is it 25 minutes, half an hour or something. Plus I've got my digestive biscuits and my my coffee. So I'll put them in some oil. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oil my inner workings. So yeah, happy days. Um, as the video is getting quite long, I'm not going to tell you about the next one now. I'll, I'll do another video because uh, it's, it's, quite, actually, it's quite funny what we do with the pram next. It's quite a good one. Um, well, they're all quite, I mean, I find it, it all quite funny looking back and it's as I'm telling the story, as I'm sort of relating what happened from nearly 50 years ago, more stuff's coming back into my mind, you know, flooding back. So, oh yes, this happened and oh, I remember that, that happened. So, um, hope you enjoyed watching the video. Uh, I, I suppose I could have called it, would have got more viewers if I'd called it something like uh, the illegal activities of a 20 year old girl in the park in the bushes or something like that but there we are i wonder if she's watching you never know she might be watching uh i won't i won't mention her name just because in case she is anyway happy days thanks for watching see you in the next video bye bye for now